Now, let me just unpack for you the two of these subfields of, of interest and, and help you to understand them a little bit more. There, um, some people find this uh, really quite boring, and then other people uh, get quite excited about uh, personnel psychology, for example, which is what I want to focus on here for a few minutes of your time. And like I said before, uh, if you really think about it in, with any level of um, interest, you'll begin to find out that impacting the workplace is a, has a profound impact on the quality of life for everybody. Because just think about how much time people spend in the workplace itself. So essentially, uh, personnel psychologists aim to identify um, people's strengths, so they identify strengths, and match them with, uh, uh, so they, and then they match them with organizational uh, needs or organizational tasks. Uh, and essentially, imagine for a moment if you were not skilled and you were given a task or you were skilled, let's, let me go at it another way. You were skilled, but you were given a task that you weren't able to do. Um, and that would be a very poor, uh, poor fit. And that's really what personnel psychology is about, is it finds the strengths of the individual and they match it with organizational tasks that fit the individual the best. And that's, that's what a personnel psychologist does. So one of the first things that they start with um, in, uh, to make a stronger organization is to assess and look at uh, the uh, strengths of the workforce themselves. And that's very much a part of creating stronger organizations is looking at a strength-based selection system. And that's what uh, this little diagram up here gives you a little bit of an idea of what all goes into it. Um, so strengths uh, based selection system. Um, and like I said, uh, for most of us, uh, I think we're generally m most aware of the selection system from this point and up because we, we understand a resume is biographical data. Um, there are references that oftentimes you have to provide. And then there are places in some workplaces where they actually do some assessment to find out what you're actually good at. Um, the selection starts at analyzing the job and being able to describe it in such a way that we get the, the necessary candidates and then recruitment itself uh, which then leads to placement and appraisal. Uh, all during that time, we might test and we might do some other interviewing that all leads, all of these things lead into this one uh, thing, and that is selecting the particular candidate. For most of us, like I mentioned, we're, we're most aware of this part of the, the pattern. In a lot of organizations, their uh, HR department is really the ones that are often doing all of this work. And, and that's uh, some of the backdrop, I think, f to understand. Uh, one of the key tools that are used uh, in this process is something that is referred to as a structured uh, interview. Um, and it is really a, uh, a very disciplined method of uh, collecting data is really what it boils down to. Um, it follows a very predictable pattern and it collects all the necessary data that will pinpoint job relevant strengths and enhance the reliability and validity of the interview itself, which means that it consistent, remember back when we talked about reliability, reliability is about consistency. Uh, validity is, does it match what it actually is trying to find? And so 
reliability and validity is very much a part of the backdrop of understanding structured interviews themselves. Uh, performance appraisals, that's right up here, um, include checklists, uh, rating scales, behavior rating scales. Uh, when the person is actually finally placed, uh, oftentimes what uh, organizations will do on a regular basis um, is something that they refer to as a 360 degree um, assessment or feedback. And what that means is, is that uh, you get feedback from all corners of your influence arena. So that means uh, supervisors, it means uh, peers, uh, it means um, uh, people who answer to you, so uh, we were often referred to those as uh, direct reports. In other words, the people who report to you is, are considered direct reports. Uh, if there is a customer base, uh, there is also uh, that element that is uh, facilitated and sought out. And so essentially, if we talk about the individual in the center here, um, bad drawing, I know. Let me try to fix that up a little bit here. So our, my stick figure, they're getting input from above. They're getting input from the peer basis. Uh, they're getting input from uh, workers below, and they're getting input from the outside in terms of customers, and that's considered a 360 uh, evaluation. <clears throat> Personnel psychologists um, help managers decide which employees to retain, uh, how to reward and pay people, uh, how to better harness the strengths. Um, and the actual job appraisals themselves that are also part of oftentimes a personnel psychologist's um, skill set uh, is to affirm, uh, affirm strengths and build up weaknesses. And that's a, a, a really very quick picture. Um, affirm strengths, uh, e uh, motivate improvement. Uh, and that, like I said, that is a very quick picture of what personnel uh, psychologists, psychology uh, is very much involved in. Now, let me turn your attention next to organizational psychology because what we're looking at there is instead of selection and appraisal, we're now looking at motivating achievement.